Well, we thought we'd give a little demonstration here on how to bed a trap. Uh, hopefully, we can instruct somebody on on how to set these traps to effectively catch wolves. Uh, I'll be making a set, and Patrick Jensen will also be making a set. So you can uh, take a little bit from each uh, set here and and make your own variation out of it. Uh, what I've got here today, I'm just using a number, this one's actually a number two, no that's a number three trap, take that back, it's a number two, <laughs> uh, just for the demonstration, for wolves you're going to want a bigger trap. Your digging tool, you're going to want uh, some good stakes, I'm using rebar, half inch rebar stakes, 18 inches long, double stake swivel uh, to cross stake with so they can't pull that out. And we're gonna go ahead and dig our trap bed. Now the trap bed you want just a little bit to where your trap is gonna fit right in there. I kinda like to make it a little bit deeper than what than what I need to be because I'm gonna fill it in with some dry dirt so I don't have problems with the trap freezing down. I'm not going to kneel on the ground for trapping canines because that's going to put scent on the ground. Uh, I'm wearing non-scent gloves, no scented gloves. Keep the human scent down to a minimum as much as possible. Uh, here I just set that on my knee. That's probably not what you want to do. Set your trap on the ground. I like to set, I like to set my traps. set it off to the side. I'm going to put that right down in there towards the front of where my trap is going to be. Take a hammer. Cross stake it. Heavier hammer works better. Harder ground than I thought here. Okay. Next step, I'm going to take some dry dirt. Kind of put it down in there. Now I like to use calcium chloride. Some people don't like that. Uh, that's just what I use. I'm going to take a little bit, put it down in there. Uh, what does calcium chloride do? It'll uh, keep the ground from freezing the trap down. It wore me out. Okay, now I'm going to press that trap down in there and set that pan tension a little bit, or the, uh, make it a hair trigger. You notice I took off my gloves again, I shouldn't have done that, but I'm going to put pan cover, this is just wax paper. Flip that under there. Take some more dirt. Like that. From this point, I'm going to press this jaw back down into the dirt that I just put there. I'm going to pack this around. I'm holding this trap down with one hand packing with the other. If you need more dirt, get it and put it in there. Dirt's cheap. Hold the trap down with one hand, bed with the other. Otherwise your trap's going to move. 
when you got it like that. So yeah, it's got wobble right there. We don't want that. Bed that trap. Just a little more dirt there. Know where your pan's at. See the white spot right there? That's my trap pan. You gotta know where that's at. Okay, that's done. Now for wolves, I need to make a dirt hole for wolves. This, for coyotes, I'd probably make a dirt hole about right here. For wolves, you're going to want to be set back 18 inches. But I'm going to go ahead and make a set here just so you can see it on video like if it was for coyotes. I'm taking wobble out of hole. Now, I'm about, about 9 inches back to the pan from the hole. And I'm offset about 3 inches. Now, that's where my lure is going to go. And if I want to guide that wolf or coyote, you want to guide subtly. You don't want to use heavy sticks. Just, you know, guide subtly. You can put a little piece of grass there. Maybe this little stick right there if you want. Clump of dirt, whatever you want, just to kind of make them look like this is the best place to step right here. So, take that, make sure that's not showing. And that's about it for making a set, but just make sure that trap is bedded. If it's wobbling or wiggling, you're not going to get a solid catch. And, I. Uh, Pan tension for wolves should be about eight pounds, no less. That way the, the wolf will get its weight forward into the trap, and get a solid catch up high on the wrist. Patrick, you want to make a set? Yeah, you bet. All right, I'm Patrick Jensen from Montana. Um, just uh, wanted to show one of my variations. Um, we just saw a video of Larry setting a, a, his trap set. Um, I'm going to tell you that there's many variations to doing trap sets and ways of trapping and as long as you're catching I feel you're you're doing it right. It's when you're not catching that you have a problem. So um, you know you can do a lot of research if you're a beginning trapper um, and, and kind of get what works for you going but uh, for right now uh, we're going to cover how I do my, my cold weather sets. Um, Larry did have a, about an 18 inch chain on his wolf trap. Um, may very well work depending on what kind of area you're in, if it's a rocky or harder soil, but if it's a clay type soil, uh, which is where I usually trap, I like to extend my chain length out to about uh, three to four feet. Um, and that, that just allows for when the, the wolf or coyote jumps in the trap so they, they can't get the leverage to pull the trap out of the ground. So basically, we're going to just start with, with Larry's set here. Um, he's already made, dug our bed. You, you want to try to keep your bed no bigger than your trap once, once it's opened with the jaws. If you have a, a two-foot circle on your trap bed, that's, that's really not, not going to benefit you in any way. So you want to keep your, your dirt area as small as possible. Um, myself, I like to chain off to the side. So basically we would take his set and I would just dig just a small ditch over to the side. My stake would be here, my chain would be folded up underneath that, and my trap in this location versus Larry's set with the chain under the trap. Now both, both ways are going to work. This is again just the way I like to do it. So uh, I do like to have about an inch of soft dirt in, in a fresh bed to bed my trap in. I will, I will slightly pack the dirt down before I start. Fill my glove up. I do set my traps off of my knees because I feel that my scent within a day to two days will actually be gone anyway, so they're not going to smell me.
So, <clears throat> traps, and, and we should probably cover this in another video. Um, if you can see this trap, for a visual, you want your jaws to sit perfectly flat. You don't want one jaw sticking up or down. You also want your pan to sit as, as parallel as possible to your jaws in the open position. Uh, that's going to help you keep a flatter set, keep your, keep your bed a little bit better. So what I would do is slightly pack my dirt there and then set my trap in and I wiggle side to side or rotational counterclockwise and clockwise until my trap sets in. And, and at that point I've got my center of my trap bedded fairly solid and then, then I go around and pack the side of my dirt. As Larry stated, always hold on to your jaws so you're not sitting there wiggling your trap around as you go. Not only that, if you accidentally hit the pan and set the trap off, you can, you can usually get your hand out of the way. Oh shoot. Here we go, I already forgot part. <laughs> now for cold weather sets, Larry did use a calcium chloride. Uh, I've heard of trappers using uh, in, say, tilled or cultivated fields. They would actually just go get some fertilizer from the farmer that he uses in the field. Calcium chloride is actually one of the bases of your fertilizer. Myself, if, if I'm not in that situation, uh, what I'll usually do is take a plug out of the ground directly below the trap. Uh, I'll try and make about an 8 to 10 inch deep plug out of the ground to allow for when the trap thaws out during the day, any water or moisture in there will actually run down the hole, fill your hole. It just buys you time. It's not a permanent solution uh, for the ice, but uh, so you want to take about an, an inch circle. <clears throat> I usually carry a pipe, but don't have it with me today, so you'd beat your pipe into the ground, tap it to the side, and allow you to remove a plug from the ground. So you've then taken that dirt out. Um, you can take a piece of window screen uh, for you guys that are just getting started and trapping. Window screen is a, a very cheap alternative for pan covers, uh, for for covers underneath. If you're gonna if you're gonna run a drain hole like that, uh, very cheap and, and easy to get a hold of. Usually you can get it for free if you go to any window uh, window stores in town. Uh, they'll give you the old screens for free. So so anyhow, back to bedding the trap. We're gonna slightly pack our dirt in. Again, clockwise, counterclockwise rotation. And then put your, your fingers on the outsides of the jaws. <clears throat> I usually start packing my corners first at the corner of the jaw and then work my way around. And if you want to check this, just barely put your finger on the jaw, put it on your, on your uh, levers for your springs. So when you can push on all four corners of your trap, Put two to three pounds of pressure on it. I mean, you want a good solid bed. So when you can move that and not see any dirt wiggle, then your, your trap is pro properly bedded. Um, that's going to help aid in when the animal steps on the trap so that uh, the trap's not moving. Uh, they don't step on, miss the pan, hit the edge of the trap, and the trap pulls up an inch, and then they obviously know it's going to be there. So um, for covers, um, Wax paper works great. I've actually seen people uh, in areas that if you know it's going to snow and the snow is going to stick around for a long time, I've actually seen people use saran wrap. Take up a 10 or 12 inch piece of saran wrap, set it over your trap, walk away. It's going to snow on that trap. You're going to be checking your traps every two days anyway, so if the snow should melt out, come back. You, you can then bed your trap that way or not. You're, you're going to find if you're running a lot of traps, it's going to be very time consuming. Uh, so that is a way some guys like to get around spending a lot of time covering their trap. Just pull the, put the saran wrap over if they know it's going to snow. Now, you can use wax paper too. That's great. The idea is that you're not filling up underneath your pan with dirt. You want that, that air space in there so that when the animal steps on the trap, it'll go off. If you got a bunch of dirt underneath the pan, it could freeze up, pack up, and they'll step on it and it won't go anywhere. So... So anyhow, um, and again, window screen would work uh, would work on this too. You want to be very careful that you're not exceeding the outside diameter of the jaws because if you do, animals step on the trap and whatever you put over, it's going to fold up in the foot 
and it's going to allow them something to slip out with. So, traps all bedded. Um, this is one of those things that a lot of times I like to go to the area I know I'm going to trap. If, if, you know, if I trap there year after year, I'm going to bring dirt home from that area during the summer and I'm going to bring it back in the winter as dry dirt. Um, you know, soils are going to be different from, from one location to the next. They're also going to have a different smell to them. So, so if, I'm, if I'm coming out here with some dirt black soil and uh, some a brown soil area and putting a trap set there, there's a pretty good chance that animal's going to sense something's up. So I typically like to keep anywhere from right at a half inch of dirt on top of my set. And the other thing you want to think of when, when, you're, when you're digging your trap bed, you, you want a location that's going to be the lowest of the entire place. Say, this is here, this is higher, this is a little higher ground, but this is the lowest ground. And we're going to use a dirt hole set here still, but you always want to use the lowest point of, of, of the, the ground because that's going to allow the animal to step and put their entire weight just because of the ground there. So when your trap is completely bedded, you've got your full set, you don't want any sharp edges leading down into your trap. You want everything to be pretty much level with the ground around it. And a lot of that has got to do with your planning when you get ready to start your bed. You know, how deep do I want to do it? Uh, usually, as Larry had stated, if you take an inch to two inches out, that's enough to work with and bring yourself back to level. Um, myself, when I get done setting, um, you obviously are going to have all this dirt you just dug up. I like to just throw this dirt out, make it look like something was in there, digging it up. That's how the dirt got there. Uh, that's going to allow you, when an animal comes into the set, they're not going to be alerted to just this one spot. Their, their, their alertness is going to already go out to, wow, what's digging, what's throwing all this stuff out there. And then if you've got your dirt hole, that animal's going to come in and he's going to be looking to see what did all that digging and wow, there's a hole there, he must have hid something in that. In, in my mind, that's, that's what your animal's going to be thinking, be it a coyote or a fox or, or a wolf or anything. Um, as, as Larry said, 18 inches on, on a dirt hole from the bed of your trap, uh, 18 would be pretty ideal you could even stretch it out to 24 if you want um, myself rather than you know when I look at a, at a trail or, or whatever I think the wolf is going to come on I like to try to bed my trap just to the just off to the right about two inches of the center of my trap so there I go touching it so here's my here's my pan on my trap if I don't set it off there so if this trail is coming in here, I want my, say it was coming in here, I want my trap just a hair off to the right. And the reason for that, I can't prove it, but I've been trapping since I was five years old. I really feel that canines or any of your predators or animals out there are right hand, are right hand dominant, just like people are, you know, how many lefties do you see? And if you actually look at, at tracks and, and start watching tracks that come into sets and following fields, it seems like every time they stop, they start out with the right foot. So uh, I believe that the right foot's always going to be forward in a stance on the majority of your animals, and that's why I like to go to the right side. Uh, if you go dead, dead center, yeah, you're going to pick them up either way, but uh, for preference, that's what I do. And, and like I say, as long as you're catching, uh, you're doing something right. So, um, gosh, what else? Um, covering. You know, I, you get a lot of trappers out there that like to keep this dirt exposed from their, their trap bed. They, they don't want any grass, any pine needles, anything in there. Preference for me is to cover that fresh dirt that I dug up with any, any type of foliage around there that can't, that can't bind up my trap when it goes off. Obviously, you don't want big rocks or anything like that in there. So I might tear up a few pieces, and, and again, it's got to be stuff from the immediate area to try and keep the alertness down. So I'll do that too. And 
scuff everything up. Uh, usually from where I sit, I'll brush my way out, away from the set, anywhere that I've stepped, and walk away and, and hopefully you can, you can get a catch there. So uh, these are just some of the things we're working on. You know, any questions you have, we're gonna we're gonna put this video on uh, a couple different Facebook pages. Definitely ask us questions if we need to get the video cameras back out again. Uh, we'll get them out, and we're gonna get everybody trapping and everybody catching, and that's the name of the game. So let's work together and let's get it done. Okay, my name is Larry Rivera. Uh, we're gonna do a quick um, little snare set up here for wolves. Uh, what I like to do is find an existing trail out in the woods, preferably in this in this case we're going to set up for wolf. Um, what I like to do is find an existing trail, something that's going to, like I say, got your tracks. Okay, let's say this is an existing trail right here. You got wolf tracks here. Okay, what I'm going to do is I like to take my snare, in this case I'm using uh, 5 64ths cable. Uh, these snares are 10 foot long. That way I can take the end of my snare with a loop in it and I can take the other end, go around a tree, loop it through the loop, pull it tight. That's going to anchor my snare. In this case we don't have a tree to anchor to. So I'm going to use my snare support. This has a piece of number 9 wire welded onto it with a loop. I'm going to take the, the anchor end of my snare, go through the loop, back over the stake. Okay. At this point, I'm going to drive my stake to the side of the trail. Okay. On my snares, I have a plastic whammy. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a plastic tubing uh, just behind the cam lock. I'm going to make my loop. What that plastic whammy is for is so I can put a piece of number 9 wire that's welded onto my snare support stake right onto that number nine wire. That right there, that snare is already pretty much set. My loop, I want to be about 18 inches in diameter. And the bottom of the snare approximately knee high is where I like it. Now, if I want to block this trail, Let's say I want to close it in because it's too wide. This wolf may want to go this way. I'm going to poke a hole right there. Take a stick. Jab it into that hole. That's closed in that, that trail a little bit right there. So now the easiest place for that wolf to walk is right through that loop like to conceal your wire a little bit or your cable uh, you can decorate it with brush however you want to to, to hide it you know just uh, you can even use this plastic tube sometimes if you got good sticks to put in there to decorate your snare but anyway that's the idea uh, 18 inch loop, 18 inches off the ground. They're quick, they're effective, uh, and they're very cost, cost effective. It's a lot less money to set up a snare than it is a trap. These here are pretty much weatherproof. Uh, you set this snare up, and that snare is just going to wait for that animal to walk through. It's, it takes a lot less maintenance than a foothold trap. Uh, would you like to add anything to that, Patrick? Um, you know what I would like to add, Larry, um, and maybe you just haven't covered it. Uh, looking at locations when you're deciding on where to set your snare, it's, it's usually not a good deal, deal 
if you're looking at a trail and you have 40, 40 or 50 yards of a straight shot on that snare because that gives that animal that entire time to pick up on what's something that's wrong. So I like to find a switchback on a trail or maybe where a trail dives off of the mountain that I know that animal is going to be using. Or even a bit um, on the trail. And the other thing, and you can, you can see in the camera, I've already looked at it, uh, you can see the location of Larry's wire. You don't want this wire, uh, your support wire for your snare flat, and you don't want it pointing downwards. Because what's going to happen with, with a lot of these, his rubber whammy actually holds that snare pretty tight. But you're going to get a lot of these are going to have a metal spring whammy on it when you, if you're buying snares. So if, you, if you've got them pointed down towards the ground, the wind's going to blow just right, and it's going to blow that snare off. And next thing you know, you come by and, and you missed your chance because your snare is laying on the ground. Uh, again, from the immediate area, uh, always when you trap and try and get things from the immediate area, I like to find sticks and conceal this stake. Uh, usually in Montana, I don't know if it's legal in Idaho, but we use what's called a kill pole. It's going to be about four foot tall. Mm -hmm. You're going to allow you to get a couple feet in the ground to hold that animal. So I like to come to whatever side I, I feel is, is the most visible to that animal. And I'll carry some mechanics wire with me and I'll wire it right to my stake. And I'll try and find a piece of brush that'll actually hang right over top of my snare without anything dangling in the middle. Uh, you're going to see a lot of these people are going to say, well, you're going to catch deer, you're going to catch elk and whatnot in your snares. Uh, I, re I usually feel that if you've got something at, at eye level or below eye level of a deer, they'll go around it. It's generally the case. Sometimes they'll duck it. Uh, for the most part, if you can cover your top and your bottom, um, or top and your sides for concealment, not always the case. You want to you want to change things up. You don't want to have the same snare set every single time something walks down the trail because they're going to get real used to to your setup. So change it up a little bit. And to, the main goal is to use things from the surrounding to conceal it. Your camouflage and your set. So you know, one other thing I might add too uh, in Idaho. It is law that, that we are having to use what they call a diverter, which is nothing more than a piece of wire that is attached either to the snare or your, uh, your snare support. That wire is going to come out and loop out this way uh, for the purpose of elk, moose. Uh, supposedly the idea is they're supposed to bump into that diverter and push this snare out of the way or cause them to back up. Uh, it is a hassle but that is the Idaho law at this point. Uh, so try to keep try to keep uh, things as legal as possible. Now is a branch, uh, is, is a, branch as a diverter going to be legal or it has to be the wire? Loop? They're saying that a piece of wire they didn't specify what gauge wire. Uh, you could use number nine wire. Uh, I, guess, I suppose you could use a coat hanger if you wanted to, uh, but let's keep it legal. We do have the, uh, the the trapping season open here in Idaho at this point. We want to keep it open, uh, and so let's uh, keep it ethical and catch some wolves. <laughs>